Right, so I'm going to talk about uh, lithium graphene from liquid phase exfoliation. Now, in order to understand liquid phase exfoliation, what you've got to understand, first of all, is how things dissolve. Now, if I'm going through some middle school chemistry, then I do apologise. It's really for uh, people who want to understand but don't have a, 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 a particularly developed basis for understanding. So that's why the introduction. So, if you know all this stuff, and I, I do apologise. Okay, so when thinking about dissolving something, what we have to think about is the nature of the bonds, what holds it together, and how those are interrupted by the liquid that we put it in. Now, if we take a simple example like sodium chloride, then what we get is uh, an atom of sodium and an atom of chlorine, and the sodium gives up an electron and becomes positively charged to the chlorine, which accepts the electron and becomes negatively charged. Now, because we've got a positive and a negative charge there, then they're electrostatically attracted, and they're attracted very strongly. And that very strong attraction is called an ionic bond, and it's, it's a strong bond, and it holds these things together. And it'll hold them together in a crystal lattice, and that's why we get salt crystals. Now, <coughs> that bond can be interrupted, and there's a number of ways of interrupting that. If we put pure energy in there, so we heat it, something like that, then it takes quite a lot of energy to break that bond. And the energy required to do that is called the energy cost. But there's another way of disrupting that bond, and that is to chuck it in some water. And if you put salt in water, we all see it dissolve. And the question is, why? Now, this ionically bonded uh, molecule dissolves in water because water is what's called a polar solvent. Now, water looks like this. So we have our two hydrogens and our oxygen. And the hydrogens carry a positive charge, and the oxygen carry a negative charge. Now, they're not particularly strong charges, but they are there. And when they approach the chlorine, because they're positive and the negative attracted to each other, of course, then a little bit of the um, electrostatic force here in this bond is drawn off by the water, and this bond weakens. But it forms another semi-bond here, called a ligand. So this is an ionic bond, and this is a ligand bond, and the ligand draws its power from the ionic bond. Now, if we put enough water around that, then that ionic bond will be completely disrupted, and the chlorine will be surrounded by ligand-bonded ligand water molecules. And it's a question of how many water molecules are needed to do that, which is a relation of how strong that bond is. That's why things dissolve at... Um, different rates, why some things won't dissolve at all, why some things are sparingly soluble, and why some things dissolve really, really easily. Because the ligand formation disrupts the ionic bond, and when it's dis disrupted, they can all float off in solution. So that's what's happening when you're dissolving something. <coughs> now when we have graphene, what we have are layers of carbon atoms in the hexagonal um, beehive structure, and, and they run along that axis called the AB axis, and then the axis straight towards you is called the C axis. So what we're doing is we're looking at the C axis down the AB axis, and between the sheets are bonds. And these bonds are called van der Waal bonds. And they're the force of attraction between the sheets because the sheets have a, a varying um, electron movement which gives rise to electrostatic charges holding them together. And that's what the van der Waal bonds are. But if we look at the AB axis, then what we get is a honeycomb structure, as we're all surely aware by now, of carbon atoms joined. And these bonds here are formed by what's called a pi pi electron sharing. And that electron sharing, uh, and we're looking at it in inverted commas for electron sharing, that electron sharing is called the covalent bond. So we have our van der Waals forces holding the sheets together, and our covalent bond holding actual structure together. Now in order to um, dissolve this, or to exfoliate it in liquid, what we need is something that will disrupt the van der Waals bonds, but isn't going to disrupt the covalent bonds. So we want something that will reduce the energy cost of the van der Waal bond but not really affect the um, covalent bonds. And luckily enough, there are things that will do that. And if you have a read at some of the papers, 
then there's a whole list of um, organic solvents or non-polar solvents. Uh, a polar solvent is something like water or ethanol that actually has a distributed charge on it. An organic solvent doesn't. But there are a whole load of organic solvents that will do that. So NMP being a good one. And this was actually the first one that was used. So what they do is get some NMP, drop some graphite in there, and then surround that with a bath sonicator, and sonicate it for about three hours. And after you've sonicated it for about three hours, then the NMP will pull off flakes of graphite as graphene and hold it in solution. And that's what we're going to attempt to do. Okay, so what we're trying to do is liquid phase exfoliation, and that is to peel the graphene sheets off the graphite. Now, in order to do that successfully, what we need to do is reduce the energy cost as much as possible. That is, we need to get those flakes to separate out, but to have them at a state where it doesn't take much energy for the graphene to be peeled off. Now, they have done it with graphite, and you can do it with graphite. It just takes more energy to do it and probably a stronger solvent. Perhaps one of the easiest things to do is to use this stuff. Now, I've shown you how to make this before. This is exfoliated uh, graphite, and you can see it forms this kind of worm-like structure. And what that means is that that crystal of graphite has been expanded out and um, by an intercalation process. And that expansion means that those sheets are actually much further apart than they were in the original graphite. So this kind of stuff is um, what I started with, and it's ideal to start with it. Now the volume here you see there is about 50 grams worth, so it weighs next to nothing, because it's so expanded. It's expanded about 200 times. So there's a big distance between the sheets there, and that's going to make it much easier to do. Now, in terms of the um, solvent that you need to use, they've used quite a lot of things, NMP being one, um, ethanol 40% in water being another, and they get results with it, but not particularly good results. Now, what I've found that works is this stuff, it's called um, Type 10 Cleaner. It's actually about 90% ethyl acetate. The other 10% is made up of um, hexane, ethanol, um, some naphtha is what's in there, and it's a pretty good organic solvent. It's a PVC cleaner and it works by dissolving the top layer of the PVC. So if you get that on any plastic, it will dissolve the plastic. And what that means is you're going to have to use a glass jar. So what I do is put a, a few millilitres of that, about 50, milli, 50 to 100 millilitres of that into a glass jar, and then chuck some of this stuff in. It doesn't matter how much you put in, because anything that doesn't, ex uh, doesn't um, dissolve is going to sink to the bottom and you can just scrape it off. Uh, once you've done that, then I put it into uh, my little sonicator bath. Now this sonicator bath is only 50 watts, so it's not particularly strong, and in there already is a jar that I've been um, sonicating away. Now, you need to put the lid on it, because this stuff will evaporate quite quickly. And it smells strongly of pears, incidentally. It evaporates quite quickly, so you need to put a jar, uh, a lid on the thing. The lid will pop up a little bit as it sonicates because it does heat as it sonicates as well. Now in a sonication bath, you fill it with water, uh, pop your jar into the water, set your time and turn it on. Now this thing runs for eight minutes. And it'll sonicate it away for eight minutes. In another eight minutes, I've got to get it going again. It's a bit irritating, but it's a cheap sonicator. It does the job, so that's what I've chosen to do. Now at the end of three hours, what you get is this. Now this particular one has been sitting around now for about six weeks. And as you can see, I've got a suspension here of um, dark black. And then at the bottom, there's a thin layer of the slightly larger graphite particles. So in here, what I've got is at least a colloidal solution of few layers of graphite, a uh, few layer graphite. Um, probably one and two layer graphene is sitting in there, and at the bottom I've got the larger graphite flakes. And after six weeks, as you can see, it's still a uh, stable colloidal suspension. So there's a very high likelihood that what we've got in here is graphene. So it's as simple as that. That's all you actually have to do to make graphene using liquid phase exfoliation. Anyway, hope that was helpful.